Good morning. Good morning and uh, welcome to the meeting of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. I'm Council Member Francisco Moya, the Chairperson of the Subcommittee. Uh, and today we are joined by Council Members Grudenchek, Lansman, uh, and Levin. Uh, if you are here to testify, please fill out a speaker slip with the Sergeant at Arms indicating your full name, the application name, or LU number, and whether you are in favor or against the proposal. Uh, today we are holding a hearing on LU 530, an application for the ENR uh, US Ventures LLC, uh, Hummus Kitchen for a renewal application requesting a four-year term approval for the continued operation of a, an unenclosed sidewalk cafe located at 444 Third Avenue in Manhattan in Council Member Rivera's district. Uh, I now open the public hearing on this application. Are there any members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, uh, I now close the public hearing on this application and we will move to our votes. Uh, today we will vote to approve LU uh, 530, the Hummus Kitchen application heard today by the subcommittee. We will be voting to approve this cafe, the size of which has been adjusted in response to community concerns from four tables to ten and 10 chairs to four tables and eight chairs. With this adjustment, Council Member Rivera is in support of this application for a sidewalk cafe renewal. We will also vote to approve LU's uh, 508-509, the Kew Gardens Hills rezoning proposal in Queens. The proposal would rezone portions of existing R2 districts and R2X district and would include a related zoning text amendment to allow such districts to be mapped in Queens Community District 8. The proposed R2X zone rezoning would establish contextual bulk regulations in order to maintain the area's existing uh, built character. Uh, Council Member Lansman is in support of this application. We will also vote to approve LU 517, the 3513 Atlantic Avenue rezoning proposal in Brooklyn. This proposal would establish a C24 commercial overlay district within an existing uh, R5 district along the uh, northern frontage of Atlantic Avenue between Nichols and Grant Avenues in order to facilitate construction of a new story, uh, of a one story uh, retail building. Uh, Council Member Espinal is in support of this application. I now call for a vote to approve LUs 508 and 509, LU 517 and LU 530. Council, please call the roll. Chair Moya. Aye. Council Member Gordenchik. Aye, with congratulations to Councilman Lansman and all the people that work so hard to facilitate the Kew Garden Hills rezoning. Council Member Lansman. Aye. Council Member Levin. Aye, congratulations to Council Member Lansman. Uh, the roll is four votes in the affirmative, zero in the negative. The vote will <coughs> remain open. We will now hear the pre-considered LUs, uh, LU items uh, C180036 ZQM and the N180037 ZRQ for the 38th Street, 35th Avenue rezoning related to property in Council Member Van Bramer's district in Queens. The applicant seeks approval for a zoning map amendment to rezone an M11 district to an R6A district, including a partial C2, uh, C12 uh, overlay district, as well as a zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area within the rezoning area utilizing option two. Uh, as originally proposed, these actions would facilitate the redevelopment uh, the development site with a new seven-story mixed-use building containing approximately 56,000 square feet of zoning floor area and 62 dwelling units in total, uh, including 19 affordable units and 43 market rate units. Approximately 80 parking spaces would be provided, which would be accessed via a curb cut on 38th Street. During the public review process, the applicant received the proposal, the proposed development to include a total of 57 dwelling units of which 18 would be affordable and 39 would be market rate. I now open the public hearing on this application uh, and I would like to call up the first panel, uh, Eric Kalotnik. Good morning, morning, Councilman and members of the council and staff. 
Thank you for hearing this application on a beautiful day. Before uh, we start, let me just yes. get the council to please uh, swear you in. Please state your name as part of your response. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and that you'll answer all questions truthfully? I do, and I shall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we're excited to be here in front of your committee, which has, I think, the greatest job in the city, uh, determining how we shape it. And we've got a great project here that uh, came to its start 11 years ago, if you could believe that, uh, and uh, when the city was entirely different and uh, the process we followed was different. And uh, they've been a beneficiary of a refined, streamlined land use process that's taken effect the last few years. And uh, the project is kicked out. And uh, the application that we have in front of you is to take a manufacturing zoning district in uh, in Astoria, which I'm going to click through here and, and give you the aerial here so you can see where you are. Uh, you're right next to Steinway Studios, uh, next to, uh, you've got Steinway Street right there, excuse me, Kaufman Astoria Studios is right behind us. You're basically right in the heart of Astoria. Uh, the family that we're representing today is a local family. It's the Pinto family of Ferrari driving schools. So for those folks who are a little bit older in the, fa in the, in the, in the audience, you may have seen the commercials when you were younger. Uh, they're family-owned business, and they've been in the neighborhood for years, and they've owned these properties that we're here for now on 38th Street uh, for the better part of the last 20 years or so. They're asking permission to rezone them to what I'm flipping through here. You can see on the right side of the, the page an R6A zoning district. Uh, with the C13 overlay. It would facilitate the development, as you said before, of a seven-story residential building, and it would have 57 dwelling units, 15 of which would be affordable, uh, so there'd be 42 market rate and 15 affordable. It would have 80 parking spaces. You only need about 20. Why are there 80? Because the, the Pinto family, who's the developers behind it, rec they're local people. They know that the parking is needed in the neighborhood, uh, so they are overparked. The community board has been very happy with the development. We've been working with them for the past uh, three to four years very closely. They put forth a recommendation to support the application as it is uh, with the request that the affordability be considered at both option one and option two. Uh, we had proposed option two originally. After meeting with the community board, we then met with Councilman Jimmy Von Bramer, who's the affected councilman in the district. Uh, and Councilman Von Bramer, I understand, although I have not spoken to him personally, but I understand he has gotten back to our team and indicated a support for uh, lower uh, MIH at 20% MIH, uh, with 60% AMIH, excuse me, 25% of the units at 60%, which we would be more than happy to agree to, and uh, I believe we've indicated such to him. Uh, other than that, I can go through the project in greater specificity if you would like me to. Uh, I could walk you through here. This is the block front. Uh, what you're looking at right now in these images, uh, the lower left, top right, that's the site itself, the development site. Uh, I could take you through to the plans and give you an idea of the building itself. This shows you, let me go back a second here, hit the wrong button. Here you've got the imagery I was talking about before, which is the seven-story building. The seventh floor, uh, you can see at the very top, is not a full floor. It's very well set back. It will not be visible from the street. So it will really read as a six-story building from the street. Uh, this gives you the parking. There's a subcellar. There's uh, two levels of parking, actually three. This level is the ground floor. And this shows you the really minimal nature of the commercial uses that we're seeking for the ground floor. Uh, only asking for about 2,000 square feet of commercial space to be utilized. The rest of it will be utilized for parking. And the commercial uses we're envisioning are artistic, immersive arts, uh, and uh, meditation studios. Uh, we're looking to build upon the art-based history of Astoria. The Pinto family themselves are very involved. The artwork you see on some of the pictures we show you is they're doing. Uh, they're involved in a beautification program in Astoria that includes artwork and murals. Uh, so all the commercial uses will have some sort of artistic or wellness sort of uh, feel to it, uh, nothing corporate, so to speak. Uh, as I move up, we give you an idea just of the floor plans, which are very hard to read here. This is a section of the building and another elevation, which you saw in a picture. Uh, that is essentially the application for you. Uh, the height of the building will be at 75 feet, just to go through that for a second. Uh, we believe it's justified. If you look at the, I'm taking you back to an overhead here. 
Uh, you can see just to the left of the rezoning area, you'll see the Ice House uh, Sports Complex, which stands at a height of about 85 feet. We're at 75 feet uh, behind us, two blocks behind us where the blue dot is. Kaufman Astoria is building a new complex there. That's about 85 feet as well. Uh, so we are not out of context with what's going on around us. Uh, so that's our entire presentation. Thank you for listening to us, or to me. And uh, hello, Councilman Reno. So how are you? I didn't see you come in. How are you? Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. I, have. I just have one uh, quick question here. What, can you just go, what was the rationale for establishing the commercial overlay on only half of the rezoning area? Uh, the, the rationale for that was, was twofold. Uh, well, first of all, it's replacing an existing manufacturing district. Uh, so the idea to keep some commercial there was, a, was the idea that the owner wanted to do to do, their, to do their uses. But from a land use perspective, 38th Street has a commercial nature to it, uh, both across the street. I can show you some of the imagery if you'd like. Uh, it's all commercial across the street. There's warehouses, former warehouses uh, that have been turned into art studios and, and, and uh, sports uh, stores across the street. So directly across the street is all commercial. And everything to the left of us, if you're looking at the red dots there, and I can show you some imagery, some pictures, that's all commercial as well. There's a Pizzeria Uno over there and some other commercial uses. So uh, the commercial use, we think, will be symbiotic with what's going on around us. We're not looking to replace uh, nothing corporate, like I said, to come in to replace what's going on on Steinway Street. And uh, the uses that we've already actually been speaking to are people that are in like the second story of buildings around that are looking for uh, this kind of space on the ground floor. Great. Thank you very much for your testimony. Thanks for today. listening to me. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to testify? Uh, seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application. Uh, I would like to acknowledge that we've been joined by Council Member Reynoso and Council uh, Member Rivera, and I'd like to open up uh, the votes again. Thank you. A new continuing vote of the land use items, Council Member Reynoso. Councilman. Council Member Rivera. Aye. Thank you. I have a vote of six in the affirmative, uh, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. The items are approved and referred to the full land use committee. Okay, we will now uh, hear pre considered LU items uh, C10042, uh, 1. ZMQ and N190151010Q and uh, C190386ZSQ for the Vernon Boulevard Broadway rezoning proposal related to property in Council Member Van Bramer's district in Queens. The applicant seeks approval for a zoning map amendment, a zoning text amendment, and a special permit for a large-scale general development, which together would facilitate construction of two residential and community facility buildings, one at five stories and one at nine stories, and a 14-story residential, commercial, and community facility building. The buildings would contain a total of 351 dwelling units, 113 of which would be affordable to lower income residents, uh, approximately 11,250 uh, gross square feet of commercial space, and approximately 7,000 gross square feet of community facility space, and 164 accessory parking spaces below grade. Additionally, the applicant intends to provide a total of approximately 17,700 square feet of publicly accessible uh, open area. The proposed zoning text amendment would establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option one and two. Uh, I now open the public hearing on this application and I call up uh, Frank St. Jacques. Good morning. Council, if you please swear in the panel. Please state your name as part of your response. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and that you'll answer all questions truthfully? Frank St. Jacques, I do. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Moya and uh, subcommittee members. Again, my name is Frank St. Jacques of Ackerman LLP, appearing on behalf of the applicant, property owner, Sipico Construction, Inc. Uh, we're here today uh, to discuss several um, land use actions uh, summarized in, in this slide. 
uh, I'll note that uh, the project has, has changed since the description that was just read into the record uh, with a reduced number of units uh, in response to uh, a discussion with the, the community board uh, throughout the uh, public review process and, and with the, the local council member. Um, the proposed rezoning area and large scale uh, general development is, is bounded generally by Vernon Boulevard and Broadway to the north, 11th Street to the east, 33rd Road to the south, which are all wide streets, uh, and 10th Street, a narrow street to the west on an irregularly shaped block that's approximately 77,000 square feet, about 1.77 acres. The site was zoned R5 in 1961, but despite the residential zoning, the area is predominantly developed with non-conforming industrial and commercial uses. The site is currently underutilized and acts as a void between the active commercial, cultural, and recreational uses to the west and south that draw visitors to the surrounding area. The surrounding area also lacks local retail and service uses that serve visitors of nearby cultural institutions, Socrates, Scul Sul excuse me, Socrates Sculpture Park to the northwest of the site and the Noguchi Museum directly west of the site. The requested actions, including the zoning map amendment, a zoning text amendment, and a special permit for a large scale general development will facilitate the development of a new mixed use and mixed income project with a site plan and massing that will fill the existing void and weave the site into the surrounding community. The rezoning would establish an R7X C24 on the majority of the site, on the northern portion of the site, and an R6B on the southern edge of the site. The text amendment establishes a mandatory inclusionary housing area with options one and two, and the special permit imposes bulk controls over the site as a large-scale general development. The large-scale general development restricts development to the proposed site plan and bulk envelope and allows the bulk to be concentrated at the intersection of Vernon Boulevard, Broadway, and 11th Street, which are all wide streets. The proposed development is three mixed-use buildings, a five-story building on the southern portion of the site within the R6B district, a nine-story building at the center of the site within both the R6B and R7X C24 districts, and a 14-story building on the northern portion of the site. The proposed development uh, would now provide approximately 330 units, including 92 permanently income-restricted MIH units. Uh, here's several images uh, showing uh, the, the site plan, which again, the large-scale general development uh, would, um, uh, would uh, mandate that the site is, is developed in accordance with. Um, there's commercial space that will be provided along, along Vernon Boulevard to activate this street and serve local residents and visitors to the area. Again, the area lacks local retail and the proposed development is positioned to meet this local need. We anticipate food and beverage uh, tenants. Um, additionally, we've been in discussion with uh, Noguchi and the Socrates Sculpture Park about ensuring that they uh, will have space within the new development. The top image uh, shows, and you'll see another image in a moment, uh, the approximately 16,545 square foot landscape public open space at the corner of 10th Street and 33rd Road. Uh, the smaller building uh, is shown to the right uh, on the, the, the upper slide at five stories that creates a transition at the southern edge of the site uh, from the mid-density R5 district map to the south. Um, the building B at the center and of the top image is limited to four stories at 10th Street, which is directly across from Noguchi Museum. And then the bottom image shows uh, the 11th Street frontage of the building uh, with access to a 166 space cellar level parking garage. Uh, two changes were made to the project uh, after it was filed uh, in response to the applicant's initial meeting with the community board and ongoing discussion uh, with the council member and, and community. Uh, the number of larger units was increased, uh, which resulted in a de decrease in the total number of units and MIH units, and the applicant committed to using option one on buildings A and B instead of option two across the entire development. Uh, this, sh this slide uh, shows the unit distribution and MIH breakdown uh, for the project, again resulting in 330 total, total units, 92 of which would be uh, mandatory inclusionary housing units uh, using both MIH option one and MIH option two. Uh, I know you're familiar with the, the facts of this project, so I'll just run quickly through the next few slides. Um, these here in green, the site plan shows 
uh, the um, significant amount of open space that's provided uh, with this project, uh, about an 1,100 square foot public open space at the northern edge of the site, uh, approximately 15,000 square feet at the center of the site for uh, building residents, and about 16,000 square feet uh, at the southern edge of the site, which will be a publicly uh, accessible uh, open space. And here's a rendering of that, that open space. Um, it's a significant public benefit to this project. Uh, this space will be a, uh, a POPs, subject to POPs enforcement. Um, the site is designed to, to allow for passive recreation. There's extensive landscaping and, uh, for use by all members of the community and visitors to the area. And it will also allow flexible use for uh, programming. Uh, the applicant has had ongoing discussions, as I mentioned, with Noguchi, uh, the Noguchi Museum and Socrates, regarding uh, both institutions taking space within the proposed development, uh, and we'd like to in include them in discussions with respect to programming ideas for the project's open space. And finally, overall, the, that application um, would allow new mixed-use development at an, under, an underutilized, non-conforming site uh, located uh, along three wide streets. 92 permanently income restricted uh, units would be provided pursuant to the MIH program. The applicant uh, has also partnered with 32BJ to provide uh, union labor for building physicians and will partner with local nonprofit HANEC to administer the mandatory inclusionary housing program. Um, that's my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Great. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh You've gotten to, together with uh, the Service Workers Union, that's always good to hear when uh, good paying jobs are uh, going to be happening in uh, projects like this. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, just to go back to the public space uh, for a second, how will, the, how will that space operate on, a, on that site? Sure, so um, while we're not obtaining a zoning bonus uh, for providing this space, um, it will be subject to the restrictions for POPs. So there will be a restrictive declaration recorded against the property requiring certain maintenance and upkeep and operating hours that are set forth in the restrictive declaration. Um, so it will function as um, essentially as a public amenity, um, similar to a park, but it's privately owned um, and uh, will be enforceable under the, the parks, or excuse me, the, the POPs program. And is the, so is the open space required to be open to the public as part of the large scale special permit? It is not. This is an amenity that, that um, we worked with uh, the community, the local council member uh, to provide as part of this project. Um, the, so the large scale um, establishes the site plan. So as part of the site plan, we're committed to providing this open space, mm -hmm. um, but providing the open space, unlike in other areas, doesn't uh, add to the project's uh, bulk envelope. There's no zoning bonus uh, attached. So this is just a commitment that the applicant has made um, in response to ongoing discussions with, with the community, in particular, um, taking account of the Noguchi Museum and its sculpture garden, which is located directly to the west of this open space. Right. And will the property owner maintain the public space? Yes, it, uh, the property owner would be required to, and, and actually any future property owners, as this would be a restricted declaration recorded against uh, the property itself. And when will that will the public have access to the open space? Uh, when the um, when the project is is built, uh, essentially, this is not this project isn't contemplated in phases, uh, so it's expected to come online. Um, essentially all at one time. So to answer your question, when, once the building is, is complete and once the, the public open space is complete, it will be accessible to the public. And, and how will that open space be identified as open to the public on sure. site? So part of the POPs uh, requirements, um, there is signage that's, that's required uh, at all entry points, uh, indicating the hours of operation, the rules, um, and identifying it as a pop space that's, that's open to the public. My understanding is that it will also be included in the uh, public databases as a, as a public pops open space uh, so that, that members of the public can research and determine that, that it's there. 
Um, though that signage is actually part of the uh, approved plans for the large scale. Uh, so those, those landscape plans are actually will be, um, they, they have been approved by the City Planning Commission and we're, um, will, will be part of this approval going forward. Uh, last question. Uh, since this project is in a uh, flood hazard area, uh, what, what kind of resiliency measures are included in the site design? Sure, so essentially the, the site itself, um, there's a significant grade change. Um, so from the, the, the northern end of the site is uh, located uh, lower, uh, the, the elevation is lower at the northern edge of the site than it is at the southern portion. So rather than um, dry flood proofing the, the commercial area, the architect uh, has, has built the building, um, has raised the first floor level. So you can see on the um, upper right hand image uh, and the, the lower images, there's, there's actually uh, stairs and AD accessible ramps leading up to that uh, commercial frontage along Broad, uh, excuse me, along Vernon from uh, its intersection with Broadway. Um, so we determined that it was, it was better to just raise the space up uh, rather than um, having potential co commercial tenants incur the cost of dry flood proofing their spaces. Um, so it's essentially, to answer your question, it's, it's the building is raised up as a resiliency measure. Great, thank you so much uh, for your testimony today. Thank you. And now I uh, would like to call up uh, Yeni Hernandez. Good morning, Yeni. And good morning, Chair Moya. Um, good morning, Chair Moya and members of the committee. My name is Yeni Hernandez. I am cleaner in Manhattan. I have been a member of SIU Local 32BJ for 14 years. I am here today on behalf of my union to share all support of this project. 32BJ represents about 4,500 members who live and work in Queens Community District 1. As resident and member, we take new development in all neighbors seriously. New projects show come with community benefits like affordable housing and job that pay the prevailing wage. I, sh I am happy to report that Saipico Construction in the developer for this project has made a credible commitment to provide prevailing wage job for the future building service worker at this site. This project will also come with the other significant community benefits such as open space available to the public, community facility space, and 92 units of much needed permanent affordable housing on the X River waterfront. We see this as an example of responsible development and respectful urge you to approve this project. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony today. Are there any other members of the public who wish to testify? Uh, seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application, and we will now hear the pre-considered LU item uh, C18028 to ZMQ for the 91-05 Beach Channel Drive rezoning uh, relating to property in Council Member Ulrich's district in Queens. The applicant seeks approval for a zoning map amendment to map a C23 commercial overlay within an existing uh, R41 district. The proposed amendment would bring an existing funeral home and its accessory parking lot into conformance with zoning. Uh, I now open the public hearing on this application, and I'd like to call up Eric Polotnik.
please state your name uh, as part of your response. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and that you'll answer all questions truthfully? Eric Palatnik, yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I was outside uh, speaking with some of your colleagues. Eric Palatnik, good morning again to everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here again in front of your committee. Uh, and this is with an, another, what I consider to be a uh, good application to allow for the continuation and the legalization of the Dennis O'Connor Funeral Home, which is at the foot of the Cross Bay Bridge as you enter into the Rockaways. Uh, you can see it right there. The, it's the, the funeral home is on the left side of the middle of the page. It's the site with the red arrow that says site. Uh, you could see on the left side of the top left corner, you could just see that the top, the very end of the approach ramp to the Cross Bay Bridge. Uh, the property is the Dennis O'Connor Funeral Home. It's bound by Beach 92nd and Beach 91st Streets. It's been there for approximately 70 years as operating as a funeral home. It's in a pure residential zoning district and you need to have a commercial overlay. So we are asking you permission to have a C23 overlay uh, to allow the funeral home to continue to exist, and I'll clarify what I mean by that. It was built before the zoning resolution took effect in the, within the residential zoning district. Uh, it was enlarged subsequently by BSA variants, uh, and then it was enlarged again after that on the left side of the property, the portions with the gray roof was enlarged without any permits at all. So the site is now uh, non-complying and uh, the, this action, the rezoning, will cause it to come into compliance. It'll add the C23 overlay over the entire parcel, uh, which only has a parking requirement of 10 spaces, which we are complying with, although we could fit much more on during a funeral if they fit as many as 20 cars onto the site. Uh, we've been working closely with Community Board 14, whose office is uh, meeting places right around the corner. They're very familiar with the site. They supported it uh, almost unanimously, I believe, if not unanimously. It's also re received uh, good support from Councilman Ulrich, uh, who is in support of it as well. It is the only funeral home servicing the Rockaways, and it is non-denominational. Uh, so it's open to everybody, uh, and uh, we'd be happy to, nothing is going to be changing. I should call out one more thing for you, just so you're aware, uh, just at the last minute, which is that the rezoning does facilitate future redevelopment of the site, should somebody, should that take place. Right now it's R4, so when we rezone it, it'll become a commercial overlay and somebody could theoretically come in and build another McDonald's or a White Castle or any commercial use on the site. Uh, so the community was concerned about that when we went through the community level review. Mr. O'Connor of O'Connor Funeral Homes is there himself, as well as two young men who are succeeding him in the business. He introduced them. They all explain the business plan right now is for the younger generation to come into place and there's a business agreement in place and that nobody has any intention of leaving the site for the next 50 to 60 years. The community, based upon their relationship and experience with O'Connor Funeral Home, took them at their word on that and O'Connor Funeral Home is committed to maintaining their location there. They're in no position to be selling and I, we submitted a letter to this effect as well and we just wanted to let your committee know uh, that they are committed to the Rockaways there is not going to be any other commercial use here for the foreseeable future other than the continuation of O'Connor Funeral Home. Well, that so. was going to go into the question if the applicant planned to redevelop or enlarge the existing development. Uh, on yeah, I figured it's, yeah, there was the logical question because it's only because I've heard it since we've started the application. You know, people say that there's no intention to build anything larger than what's here. They do free up uh, approximately uh, 8,000 square feet of development rights as a result of this. So there could be an enlargement. They're a very forthcoming family that owns the property and that operates there. Uh, they're very straightforward. If we had any desire to enlarge, we would have presented it right now. Uh, we have no reason not to. Uh, we came in with an illegal condition asking for this permission. So we're once again stating to you on our, uh, the, not on my good word only, but only on the, the good word of a bit neighborhood business that's been there for decades that there's no desire to enlarge or to, uh, or to change ownership or change the property in any way, shape, or form. Okay, great. Thank you very much for your Thank testimony you. today. Thank, Thank you. you for hearing me. Uh, are there any other members of the public who wish to testify? Uh, seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application and we will now hear pre-considered LU item uh, C180291 ZMQ for the 
15-33 Clintonville Street rezoning related to property and council member of a loans district. The applicant seeks approval for a rezoning uh, map amendment to map a C-13 commercial overlay within an existing R-31 district. Under the proposal, the existing retail use on the property would be brought into conformance with zoning, and the site could also be redeveloped and modernized, which would not, which would not be permitted under the current zoning. Uh, I now open the public hearing on this application and call up uh, Frank St. Jacques. Please state your name as part of your response. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and that you will answer all questions truthfully? Frank St. Jacques, I do. Thank you. Uh, good morning again, Chair Moyan, subcommittee members. Um, Frank St. Jacques of Ackerman LLP here on behalf of the applicant for the, this proposed rezoning project. Um, I'll run through this presentation quickly and I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, this application seeks to establish a C-13 overlay within an existing R-31 zoning district at 1533 and 1535 Clintonville Street that uh, is comprised of two tax lots on Block 471, Lots 6 and 7 in Queens Community District 7. The proposed rezoning area has frontage on the Cross Island Parkway service road south to the north and Clintonville Street to the west. It's approximately 6,400 square feet. Sites currently improved with a uh, legal non-conforming obsolete commercial building uh, and a vacant two-story home. Just another view of the small commercial building at the site, uh, which cannot be reconfigured for a new commercial use uh, without structural alter alterations, uh, hence this uh, zoning map amendment application. The proposed, um, oh, excuse me, the proposed action is a zoning map amendment to add a C13 overlay to the existing R31 district. The proposed overlay would facilitate redevelopment of the site with a new one-story commercial building. Uh, this would have a small surface parking lot that will be landscaped to screen from uh, the, the new commercial development from surrounding properties. And that's shown in the site plan here uh, with the uh, proposed new one-story building on the uh, southern edge of the, or on the uh, lower portion of the site plan with the surface parking lot and uh, uh, screening landscaping um, surrounding it. And here's a, a massing of the uh, development. Um, again, it's just a one-story commercial building to replace an existing non-conforming commercial use at the site. Um, through, uh, throughout public review, the community board and the Queensboro president had asked for uh, several conditions, uh, which the applicant has agreed to, um, and we're happy to an answer any questions today. Great. Um, leading with that, uh, community board seven had several conditions uh, to their approval related to the, the site considerations. Uh, is the applicant still willing to meet those conditions? The applicant is, yes. Thank you. And how will you memorialize those commitments? So the applicant has agreed to record a restrictive declaration against the site um, with respect to the, the listed conditions in the, the community board's approval. Uh, I believe there's a draft of that uh, that has either has been provided to council's office, um, uh, sorry, the, uh, to your office, um, and if not, I can make sure that great. that gets to you. Yeah, if we can get a copy of that, that'd be great. Uh, thank you very much for your testimony tonight. Thank you. We will now hear a uh, pre-considered, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, are there any uh, other members of the public who wish to testify? Uh, seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application. And we will now hear a pre-considered LU item uh, C190422ZMQ for the 112-06 uh, 71st Road rezoning uh, relating to property in Council Member Kozlowitz's district in Queens. The applicant seeks approval for a zoning map amendment uh, to rezone a portion of an existing R12 A district to an R32 district. The proposal would bring into conformance two separate existing non-conforming 
uh, use group for medical offices within the rezoning area. And I now open the public hearing on this application. Uh, Richard Lobel. Good morning. Good morning. Please state your name as part of your response. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and you will answer all questions truthfully? Richard Lobel, I do. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Moya, committee members. Richard Lobel from Sheldon Lobel, PC, and we're here for the 11206 71st Road rezoning in Queens. The rezoning area is indicated in the circled area on the map is currently located within an R12A zoning district. Uh, this district is notable for several reasons. The first is that it only permits a 0.5 residential FAR uh, with a one for community facility and it also only allows for single family home use. So the area that's highlighted in the uh, dotted line is Currently zoned R12A and the proposal is to, uh, to rezone that to an R32. This would have the primary effect of allowing for the legalization of a doctor's office, which is in the building that's highlighted in red, in red on the map. Uh, the zone, rezoning would include these four lots fronting on, uh, on 112th Street in this area. We feel that the land use rationale here is particularly appropriate uh, given the fact that there is an R71 district across to the northwest and southwest of the site, as well as several large community facilities located in and around this block. There's a public school on the same block as the site, and to the north, across 71st Road, there is both a college, Toro College, as well as a house of worship. Again, from the land use map, you can see that the building stock here is relatively large to the west of the site. There's buildings ranging from six to 10 stories in the immediate view of the site. So the R32 here actually offers a nice transition between the denser R71 and the, uh, the relatively low density R12A to the east and northeast. The actual change to the zoning map would be as indicated on this map, which would include the R32. It would run for 100 feet from 112th Street. And finally, to note, uh, in, in addition, we have pictures, but the zoning, uh, the zoning calculations comparison table, uh, the bulk for these uh, two zoning districts is essentially the same. It's the same maximum bulk. Um, the, the real uh, critical issue here is, of course, the use. The doctor's office here, Dr. T's pediatrics office, is a uh, local institution. It's heavily utilized by the local community. There's many of the surrounding, uh, in the surrounding dense residential areas, there's many families that use this practice. Indeed, it was submitted into the record that over 8,000 uh, local families use uh, Dr. T's pediatrics. And so we did have the support of the community board, uh, the Queensboro president, and the uh, city planning commission. I would know, just paging through the pictures of the site as well as the surrounding larger residential, that um, the community board did request that only the site itself be rezoned, so only that um, 7,200 square foot lot, while the uh, Queensboro president and city planning commission all recommended rezoning of the four lots for context. So that's really the entirety of the application. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Great, well, let's stick with the community sure. board uh, for a minute. Um, what was the discussion like uh, at the public hearing uh, on this application? So the, the vote itself was 38 to four in favor of this modified zoning district boundary. Uh, I think that the discussion was around uh, density and whether or not there would likely be any redevelopment of the other lots. Indeed, there was only four lots included in this application. Um, I think what was compelling to the City Planning Commission and the Queensboro President is that, uh, is that uh, any development, first of all, would be hampered by the fact that you're still uh, within that 0.5 residential FAR. And so of the four buildings on that block, on that block frontage, um, two of those buildings are already built above a 0.5 FAR. And so changing them to an R32 would actually bring them closer to being in compliance. There's an attic rule in the R32 which would allow them to go to 0.6. So um, it just is not a case where, for example, in many applications we come in with a sizable residential rezoning where there's, these are definitely, you're creating uh, soft sites or, and that you're creating an opportunity for development. Here the, the prevailing view at the at the Queensboro President and the City Planning Commission was that that's highly unlikely to happen and that this would merely allow for this use to continue. So was that their concern that it was uh, 
related to the rezoning area and to the other lots along 12th Street? Correct. That, that, was, that was the sole concern. They were, they were very supportive of the doctor's office, but um, I think that this was the second application that had come before them in about six months with a right. similar set of factors. And so they just, I think, just kind of naturally said, well, if we can curb it back, we'd like to curb it back. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you very much for your Thank testimony you, today. Thank of you, Of course. Are there any other members of the public uh, who wish to testify? Uh, seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application. Uh, we will now hear pre-considered LU items uh, C19158ZMM and N190156ZRM for the Terrence Cardinal Cook proposal uh, relating to property in Council Member Ayala's district in Manhattan. The applicant seeks approval for a zoning map amendment to change an existing R7-2 district to an R8 district and an R7-2 to C15 uh, to an R8 C15 as well as a zoning text amendment to map the site to map the site a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option 2. Uh, these actions will facilitate the rehabilitation of the existing Terrence Cardinal Cook Flower Hill skilled nursing facility and redevelop the eastern portion of the site to include 150 units of supportive housing, uh, 379 residential units, and a PACE medical facility. The applicant currently operates a multi-building campus known as Terrence Cardinal Cook Healthcare Center that serves low, in that serves low income populations. The proposal would allow uh, TCC to invest in the redevelopment and modernization of their facility. Uh, I now open the public hearing on this application and We'd like to call up uh, David uh, Karnovowski, uh, Raphael, Raffaella Dunn, and Scott LaRue. Please, please state your name as part of your response to you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and you answer all questions truthfully. Raffaella Dunn, I do. Scott LaRue, I do. David Karnovsky, I do. Thank you. Is, is the microphone on? There we go. Great, thank Better? you. Better? Sorry. Okay, good morning. Um, my name is Raffaella Dunn. I'm with a company called Washington Square Partners. We're advisors to um, Arch Care and Terrence Cardinal Cook on the rezoning of their property in East Harlem. Um, just, I have a little background on um, Arch Care and Terrence Cardinal Cook. Arch Care is the long-term care division of the Archdiocese of New York. Um, Terrence Cardinal Cook operates one of their skilled nursing facilities that's located um, on a full block bounded by Fifth Avenue, uh, East 105th Madison and East 106th. The property, the block operates as a campus, but it was originally, um, it's located in buildings that were originally constructed for different uses and, and eventually were um, put together in order to allow the facility to operate as a campus. Um, the facility is a 559-bed skilled nursing home together with a 56-bed specialty hospital. Terrence Cardinal Cook is a safety net provider, which means that 80, you know, met most of their, uh, the resident population is a Medicaid population, so 86% of their patients historically receive Medicaid. Um, they're also the last remaining HIV AIDS skilled nursing facility in Manhattan, and 35% of their residents come from uh, the East Harlem, the immediate East Harlem zip code with an additional 30% coming from the greater Harlem area. So the genesis of this project was because Department of Health um, issued a policy directive to move away from uh, institutional care settings for long-term care and more towards a home and community-based healthcare system for the frail and the elderly. And as a result, my company started working with uh, Terrence Cardinal Cook and Arch Care to evaluate how they could rebalance their provision of care on the property that they owned. And we were given two goals. The first was to continue to serve the vulnerable population. Um, and the second was to remain a healthcare provider and major employer in the East Harlem neighborhood. 
So through this evaluation, we established that really um, looking at new construction and um, potentially uh, lower cost alternatives, the only option was to renovate the Flower Hill Hospital building, which is located on Fifth Avenue, which was large enough to allow the consolidation of the ongoing skilled nursing facility. Um, several years ago, uh, well, I would say Terrence Cardinal Cook is a five-star healthcare provider for long-term care, but two years ago, Department of Health does an annual inspection, and um, they received um, a, a three-star rating as it related to the status of their facility. So this project's been in the works for quite some time, um, but the building itself is very aged and in need of significant improvement. And so earlier this year, TCC um, entered into a $25 million loan so that they could initiate some of the improvements that are required to the building. Um, there's a second tranche of money that they'll close on later this year. But in order to repay that $50 million loan and to fund the additional $50 million of uh, alterations that are due, renovations to the building, they intend to ground lease or sell a portion of the site for residential development which is um, the reason why we're looking to rezone. So as I mentioned, uh, the facility operates as a campus, and as a result, they need to um, renovate the flower building first in order to be able to relocate their resident population into that building and unencumber the balance of the property. So they need to relocate the boilers and the chillers uh, the OTPT lab into that building so that the other uh, real estate can become available. Um, the second step is to um, build a supportive housing building on the corner of 105th and uh, Madison Avenue. That's the current location of a parking garage which had been closed for a number of years because it had structural problems. Um, but that is the first portion of the site that we are able to unencumber. And then the last phase is to develop a uh, residential building with a 500 member program for all inclusive care for the elderly on the balance of the property. Um, so the land use actions are to rezone the R72 and R72 C15 portions of the property to an R8 and an R8 C15 district and to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area. The effect of the rezoning doesn't increase the amount of floor area that can be developed on the property. It shifts 145,000 square feet of that potential development from community facility use to residential use. Um, this is an illustrative massing. Um, Terrence Cardinal Cook is the applicant. There is no development partner for uh, the, the residential building. Um, so this is just illustrative, the maximum massing that's possible under the rezoning. As far as context is concerned, the, um, we believe the new buildings will be consistent with other nearby projects. The height of the residential building, uh, maximum envelopes, 356 feet. Um, that's about 150 feet lower than the, the uh, building, the Mount Sinai building that's located two blocks away. Um, our original application was to do MIH option two, and at the request of the borough president, we were asked to expand that to include option one as well, which we did. We modified the application, um, and we do now understand that um, Councilwoman Ayala has requested that we only include option one um, as uh, in, in our application, and so to the extent that the council agrees with that, the applicant is willing to make that adjustment. Um, and then in addition to MIH option one, we, the new residential building would conform with 421A. And this is a uh, uh, city planning commission had asked us just to put together some illustrative renderings of what the potential developments could look like. Um, this was um, an illustration of the supportive housing building at the corner of 105th and Madison. And this is an illustration of the potential residential building at the corner of 106th and Madison. And this just shows mid-block the entrance to the Pace Center, which Terrence Cardinal Cook will continue to own and operate. Um, so just to review, we're now in the middle of doing the flower, the renovations to the, the ongoing skilled nursing facility. Um, once those are complete, we'll move all the activities and residents from the other buildings into that building. 
construct the supportive housing building in a partnership with a qualified provider on the corner of 105th and Madison and sell or ground lease that uh, residential building um, where TCC will retain an ownership interest in the program of all-inclusive care for the elderly. Great, thank you. Uh, let's go back to your MIH. So how much affordable housing is required per MIH and what were the MIH options that you were considering again? But um, we originally started the application with option two, which is 30% of right. the floor area at an average of 80% AMI. We were ask, asked to expand that to include both options at one point, but now we've been asked to focus on 25% of the floor area um, at uh, an average of 60% AMI. That's approximately 85,000 square feet. And will the MIH housing be the the supportive housing? Yes. Okay. Uh, and can you explain the phasing of the different elements of the plan? Uh, yes, the first phase is to consolidate all of the activities into the renovated Flower Hill Hospital building, which is about three years mm -hmm. of construction, but has already started because there were improvements to the building that were necessary. Um, the next phase would be to do the supportive housing building on the corner of 105th and Madison. And the last phase is to do um, the residential building with the pay center in the, uh, in the, the base of it. And is uh, TCC committed to staying in uh, the Flower Hill building uh, and staying at this site long term? I can. I'm <laughs> yes, good afternoon, or good morning, Scott LaRue, uh, President and CEO of ArchCare, uh, which is the healthcare ministry for the Archdiocese of New York, and uh, we're completely committed to the mission of our programs there on uh, Fifth Avenue, and that's certainly demonstrated by our recent uh, $50 million loan that we took out in order to uh, move this project forward. Right. And can you discuss uh, your efforts around ensuring uh, good wages for operation staff. Yeah, the majority of our staff are members of SEIU and represented by uh, collective bargaining. We fully support that and have been excellent partners uh, with labor and it's our intention that that will continue. Great. Um, and just seeing uh, one of the uh, uh, recommendations that the community board had made was that uh, the project team utilize a local non-for-profit developer. Is that something that you're still committing to or? Yes. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you very much for your testimony today. Uh, appreciate you coming down here. I'd like to call up the next panel, uh, Joanne Lawson. Udora Ortiz and Carol Willis. Good morning. Uh, if you would just state your name and then we can uh, begin. And you can begin your testimony. You can begin your testimony if you'd like. And just make sure that the button is on so that the microphone, there, you, there we go. Perfect. Thank you. I'm Joanne Lawson and I'm here to support this project. I am the TA president of Lakeview, which is directly across the street from Arch Care. It's a complex of 446 units uh, of affordable housing. We have just got a 40-year deal where we have 40 years, and my tenants use the facilities. This is going to be great for my tenants. I have a large population of, of multicultural people that use Terrence Cardinal Cook. They use it as their dialysis center. They use it for short-term care, uh, rehabilitation. 
It is, and it has been in our neighborhood for, I would say, over 100 years because I also was born there. <laughs> Which makes it a treasure in the community, and one that we really have to keep. Again, I say I have uh, thousands of people in my complex that will use the facilities, and it's a necessary facility. It's an advantage. We can walk straight across the street when someone's rehabbing. You can do dialysis and still come home in the evening and come straight back and walk across the street. So we have a great partnership. Great. Thank you. Good morning, members of the council. My name is Eudora Ortiz. I am a lifetime resident of East Harlem. I had my daughter at Flower, which is TCC now, and I've had many experiences with the rehabilitation at TCC. My sister, myself, and my brother, we've all been there. And um, it's a very vital organization for the community. Um, I know many people who love it because it's been servicing them for many, many years. And I just want to say that it's very important for East Harlem. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Carol Wills. Morning to you, Good morning, Chairman, and other council members. First, I'm an 1199 member, and I have worked with TCC for over 25 years. Um, this project would mean a lot to us. It would be for the great expansion to the community because of the residents who reside there. Also, we are going to save jobs. And we are also going to have new jobs. We're going to create new jobs with all the new technology that would be coming in. Right now, the ambience of the place is not so appealing because we are given five-star care but we're in a three-star building. So that is why we would like this project to go through. So I'm in favor of this project. Great. Thank you all for uh, coming down here and for your testimony today. Thank you so much. I'd like to call up uh, the next panel, uh, Nicola Rodney and Tareen James. You can just state your name and then you can begin. Good morning, my name is Nicola Rodney. I'm an 1199 member. I've worked at Terrence Cardinal Cook for over 25 years. I approve of the project because the community, it will benefit the community, it will benefit the residents and also the staff. And I love working there because I wouldn't be working there for over 25 years if I didn't love the mission that the Arch Care and the Archdiocese stands for. So I back this project. Great. Thank you so much for your testimony. Good morning. My name is Taryn James. I'm Union 1199 Union Delegate, and I'm a young Arch Care worker. I'm here to advocate for this project because I think it would be meaningful to my employees, the staff, the community, and I would like to work another 25 years with them. <laughs> <laughs> I love my job, I love where I worked, and I'm just looking forward to giving them more of my service for them. Hence, we're here for it. <laughs> Great, thank you so much, both of you, thank for your you. testimony today. Uh, are there any other members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, uh, I now close the public hearing on this application. Uh, we will now hear LU items five, uh, 534 and 535 for the Left Rack City Parking Garage proposal relating to property in my district in Queens. Uh, the applicant seeks approval for a new zoning special permit as well as a zoning text amendment that would establish the new special permit. 
If approved, the action would facilitate uh, the continued use of an existing three-floor public parking garage located in Corona, Queens, and adjacent to the residential portion of the Lefrak City Residential Complex to the north and east. The existing garage currently includes 356 unattended parking spaces uh, on the ground and second floors, and 350 attended parking spaces located on the roof, and which are leased to the New York City Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, no expansion, enlargement, or alteration uh, is intended as part of the application, with the exception of additional screening on the garage's roof. I now open the public hearing on this application and would like to call uh, Jeremy Cozen, uh, George Fontes, and Seth Wright. Good morning. Good morning. Just please state your name as part of your response. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, uh, and that you will answer all questions truthfully? Jeremy Cozen, I do. George Fontes, I do. And Seth Wright, I do. Thank you. You may begin. Good morning, my name is Jeremy Cozen with the law firm Freed Frank, Harris, Schreiber, and Jacobson. I'm here with Seth Wright and George Fontes, two members of the applicant's team. We're here today on behalf of LSS Leasing Limited Liability Company to present an application to facilitate the continued use of an existing three-floor garage at 5817 Junction Boulevard, which is the commercial section of Lefrak City. The garage was subject to a prior special permit pursuant to 74, Z, Zoning Resolution 74512, uh, which was approved by the Board of Estimate in January 1968 with a term of 50 years. The garage has operated continuously throughout that 51-year period. This application does not include any new development or enlargement. It only includes additional roof screening and bike parking to comply with current zoning regulations. The application was certified by city planning in June, and Queens uh, Community Board 4 issued a recommendation on June 21st approving this application. Uh, the vote was 22 to 1. On July 29th, the Queensboro president recommended approval, and on September 11th, city planning commission unanimously adopted a favorable report on this application. So the site is located on the southwest corner of the Lefrak City Complex. Uh, the zoning district is a C44 commercial district, and the site has approximately 212,402 square feet of lot area. There are two office buildings with primarily government tenants located in the buildings. That includes DEP, NYPD, IRS, and Con Ed. And the DEP has exclusive access to 350 parking spaces on the roof of the parking facility. The remaining spaces in the parking facility are for other tenants, and there's a small number of parking spaces for the public. Two other buildings uh, locate, two other uses on the zoning lot include a post office and coffee shop, which we can see in these pictures. Um, the, the post office is to the right of the top right of the picture of, in the top right hand corner, as is the coffee shop. And there are two curb cuts um, that can be ac one accessed on off of Junction Boulevard and the other uh, Horace, off of Horace Harding Expressway. The Horace Harding Expressway curb cut, which you can see uh, on all three of these pictures, is used exclusively by DEP and the post office, um, the post office for deliveries and the DEP to access their um, entry into the parking facility at the end of a 224 foot driveway. Uh, the current application is, for a special, is to essentially renew the special permit that was granted by the Board of Estimate in 1968. However, instead of 870 parking spaces, the amount of parking spaces under this application will be 706. And this is to match the existing condition today. Um, it is our understanding that 870 parking spaces was actually never striped in the garage and that the garage has um, essentially existed in the current condition, which we are seeking um, to, I guess, include as part of this special permit application. Um, there will be 71 bicycle parking spaces on the ground floor. There are currently 21 there today. Uh, and there will be additional screening added to comply with the zoning resolution on the roof level. Additionally, in, uh, in addition to the special permit, 
uh, the applicant seeks a zoning text amendment to allow the garage, which has operated successfully for 50 plus years, to continue meeting its parking demands without having to provide unnecessary and excessive reservoir spaces. Um, in order to achieve uh, this, this finding um, that will be, that is the subject of the text amendment, um, the applicant must show that the continued use will not add to serious traffic congestion or unduly inhibit vehicular traffic and pedestrian flow in the surrounding area. And we've uh, included in our application a traffic study that supports this proposition. Um, because, the garage, because the garage is currently in operation, we were able to observe and determine exactly how many reservoir spaces were needed. So in conclusion, uh, the, this application is for the continued use of a garage in the same manner as operated for decades, the DEP to have parking spaces on, its, on the parking facility's roof, and for the commercial tenants to continue to park in an off-street parking facility. And based on the foregoing, uh, we request that this application is approved. And I'll now take any questions. Great, thank you very much. Uh, just uh, one quick question. Uh, do you know whether this tax amendment uh, will only apply uh, to this project site, or will it affect the development of uh, potential, the potential of development on other sites? Uh, only this site. The text amendment applies in only in Community District 4, uh, Queens Community District 4, in C44 District, and this is the only C44 District in Community District 4. Great. Thank you so much for your testimony today. Are there uh, any other members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application. Uh, this includes today's meeting, and I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, council, and land use staff uh, for their hard work in attending. This meeting is hereby adjourned.